So you're here in the beautiful city of San Francisco. The BART is incredibly expensive and also takes its sweet time if there's a failure in the network. Ubers are also really expensive. The streetcar is okay, maybe a little novel, but yeah, you can use that to get around. And then of course, there's all of those them trolley buses. But there is another way that you can get around San Francisco, scooting. So what is Scoot, I hear you ask? Well, it is a ride-sharing platform for electric scooters. And the only thing that you need to ride is a car license. And you have to be over the age of 21. You have to have a clean license, naturally. That is pretty much it. So how does Scoot work? Well, there's a smartphone app that you can use and then you book a scoot much like you'd book a ride share through Uber or Lyft, except in, instead of having someone come and pick you up, you go and find a scoot and you ride it yourself, you drive yourself. Now you might think that in order to, to have a scoot you need to have a full set of motorcycle gear, but actually you don't. Scoot provides helmets, there's a massive top box behind me right here and it stores in it two open face helmets. You get a small helmet and then you get a larger helmet. Now, because I'm a biker and because I wanted to use the microphone, I've actually brought my own helmet. Obviously, we've got the, uh, the GoPro on the side here. But if you're just gonna ride casually around town, that is a, a really, you know, a really useful thing for you to do. Just everything is there, everything as you need it. The speed limit through here is 15 miles an hour. So it's the only time really in San Francisco that you need to be aware of the speed limit of this vehicle because this vehicle has a top speed of 30 miles an hour as a streetcar. Or you can do what I did today which is spend $49 and you get unlimited rental for the day. Now that's a little expensive, you might think, if you're outside of San Francisco, but let me tell you, for me to get from Oakland Airport, which is where I landed this morning, to the Embarcadero, which is the stop I got off at on the BART, $22, $23, and that's quite expensive, really, when you think about it. And, you know, if you, if you want to, to go around town all day, on the BART, not that you generally do go on the BART in San Francisco because the BART kind of skirts the edge of the city. But if you want to go on the streetcar or anything else, it's kind of expensive. I mean, everything in San Francisco is expensive. Obviously, you're not going to ride on something like that, but you know, maybe, maybe one of the trolley buses or something. It's still expensive. I scooted over to Scoot's office this morning or this afternoon and I had a chat with the team there. And they actually have special training sessions that you can go on if you are worried about riding a scooter, you don't know how to ride a scooter or you're, you know, you're feeling a little unsure of yourself, then you can go and be trained. If you kind of person who likes watching videos, you can actually watch a video. Scoot has a series of videos and if you want to rent a scooter from them, you either have to watch the videos and go through the questionnaires or you just have to go to one of your first ride sessions where you get to learn the basics of riding a scooter. If you're a biker like me, you know, watching the videos or going through the videos and clicking the, the, the multiple choice questions, it, it's kind of easy, to be honest. It's all this standard stuff like, you know, make sure you ride across tram tracks at a sensible angle and give yourself more time in the wet to stop. Where Scoot started, they used a Chinese electric moped that was kind of modeled on a Vespa and Frankly, it wasn't very good. It was okay, but those are the classics, and they weren't all that great. But this one is based on a Gen ZE scooter. And as it happens, it's rather good. Now, I think we're gonna do that. Thank you, because that gives me plenty of room to see what's going on, and they get plenty of room to see what's going on too. 
So like any other scooter, this, this system here is, is really simple to use. If you've ever ridden a petrol scooter, or even, you know, one of those toys that you, you go on at the fair, that you go around a little track on and it's like a motorbike and you twist, then you'll be familiar and, and happy with this. You know, you, you twist that to go, back brake on the left, front brake on the right, your indicators are on the left, and it is your horn, and then on the right, you've got the go button, this red glowy thing here by my thumb. But what you have to do is you have to press that button if you want the bike to actually turn on. So you have to tell it to turn on using the app, and then you press that button, and it will turn the bike on. If you don't do it quickly enough, it will turn the bike back off again. So, just be warned. It's not something that you can just set and forget. You know, if, you, if you're going to jump on the bike, Make sure that you set yourself and everything ready first. <laughs> the balance on this bike is so good, I was able to bring that to a complete stop without putting my feet down and then just carry on. That was, that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. So you might have noticed here, there's no speedometer in front of me. That is because, let's do a little bit of a Yui here. You can give an idea of how the handling is. There's no speedometer because the speedometer is on the app for your phone. So let's bring over, let's just stop here for a second. Actually, you know what? No, let's carry on. Uh, you can see we're at the top of the hills in San Francisco. We did a really good job. We got through. Now, obviously moving it in a tight space is just like any other bike. You have to be careful. You do the little duck walk. But if you're good on a bike, <laughs> you won't have any problems with this at all. And I'll show you one more time up here to get an idea of, of just how it handles and, and what it's like to use. So, look at that, it's beautiful. San Francisco Bay is so pretty at this time of year. We are now almost at walking speed. And I'm using just a little bit of back brake drag. So if you're a biker and you're used to using, you know, your back brake to keep you steady at slow speeds, then you'll be familiar with this. And it's really very finessed. And I don't feel vulnerable. And I don't feel as dangerous. I definitely don't feel vulnerable on this bike previous electric scooters I've been on, I have. And in fact, I used to own an electric scooter. I owned it for all of two days and then I panicked and sold it. And I sold it because it was absolutely terrible. It really was the worst electric motorbike ever. So it's a bit of an adventure. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> there must be an exit here because I can't go back that way. Unless, there's a guy doing push-ups. Look at that. There's a guy doing freaking push-ups. I nearly swore. There's a guy doing push-ups in the parking lot. This is weird. I've got lost. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull over here. And then I'm going to have a look on my GPS and figure out where I'm going. <laughs> Such a numpty. So I need, I'm going to go to the Embarcadero now. Embarcadero Station, which is two miles away. Doesn't feel like it's two miles away. I've got, it's still sort of still got a 20 mile range. 16 miles range. Okay, so I came through town. I went up a really steep hill and I've still got 16 miles of range. That's good. If you've never... Oh, hey. I just spotted someone at the side of the road who was getting into a scoot and I said, hey, how do you like it? And he said, I really like it. He was getting parking tickets all the time. So he got rid of his car and he signed up for the kind of $99 per month special package that Scoot has. Parking in San Francisco is a bit of a pain, to say the least. So being able to, you know, stop 
and get get around on a scooter must be must be a really good thing. I mean, must be must be really great. Look, there's a leaf and some two electric vehicles side by side, except they've got an 80 kilowatt motor and a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. Yep, that's an early. No, actually, maybe they. Oh, some new seats. And this thing has got a much smaller motor. I'm afraid I don't know the size of the motor, but it has a 1.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. All these blinking potholes. Look at that. Bah, 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 bah. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, come on, potholes. Potholes. Go to hell. There you go. Um, <laughs> now, i got to say, downtown, the roads are a lot better than they are up, up here. The roads are a bit of a challenge, but the bike is doing really well with them, and the bike's not having any issues with, with this particular road. I'm having some issues with this particular road, but the bike's not. And we're going to go a little bit further south and we're going to pick up Jackson Street, hopefully. And we're going to go, oh, no, Jackson is a one way. In a quarter mile, turn left. There we go. We've got our, we've got our new route. Thank you, Google Maps. So the nice thing about Scoop is it's actually really easy to use and it's very convenient. And it's fun. I mean, I really, I'm really enjoying this. You know, admittedly, I don't have a motorcycle right now, but I'm really enjoying riding. I really am enjoying it. Now, I'll admit this morning when it was, you know, single digit Celsius and it was raining really, really, really hard, scooting around San Francisco was not fun at all, let me tell you. I mean, it was, <laughs> that was bad. It really was bad. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can go right on red, unless the sign says otherwise. I know a lot of people watching this in the UK are going, but she's going, she's turning on lights. The lights, she's turning on the lights. It's all wrong. Don't worry. We have the technology. So really in San Francisco, you've got a couple of options. You know, you can, you can take a lift, you can take an Uber, you can take a streetcar, you can take a trolley bus. If the BART happens to go to the part of San Francisco that you want to go to, and, and really BART doesn't really, uh, there's like 10 stations in the BART area, everything else is somewhere else. Look, British bus, look at that. Crazy, no it's not, it's a double-decker bus, it's a left-hand drive. So yeah, as I was saying, if, if, if you feel comfortable using those other forms of transport and you don't want to get wet, you don't want to have, you know, the risk of being hit, and there is an inherent risk of being hit, the issue though is, is less than you think. Because, honestly, oh, that one nearly got me. That one nearly threw me. It's stuff like that, really, that's more likely to to cause you problems than any other kind of setup. Oh no, actually, I'm going to stay right here because that guy's going left. Wow, it's an old school Range Rover. How old is that? Okay. So these double potholes are a pain in my side. They really are, and they get on my nerves, frankly. You see, there's lots of other scooters around San Francisco. Oh, look, there's another one. Hello. And you can see that this guy here has got a regular, he's got the helmet, the free helmet that they give you. Well, they don't, you lend, they lend you a free helmet. Now, personally, I prefer to bring my own helmet because I like having a full face helmet. I know mine is a flip up, but it's a full face helmet. But at the other point, you never know if somebody's dropped your... No, you never know if someone's dropped the helmet and damaged it. And helmets really only protect you if they've never been in an accident. Helmets are like a single-use item. Once you've had one accident in them, you've had an accident in them. And you have to get them replaced, frankly. I mean, it's simple as that. The other thing, though, to bear in mind, I mean, it, it is a minimal risk. And if you're wondering, okay, has the bike been dropped? The guys at Scoot have technology in the in the bikes 
that allow them to figure out if the bikes have been dropped. So they've got sensors in them. And they, they send you a message, go, hey, did you drop the bike? You okay? To make sure that you haven't, like, you, you know, low-sided or high-sided the bike and you, you're on the floor and or someone's hit you. I mean, that's the other option. So those things are there to make sure that you stay safe at all times. Now, the guy across from me is actually riding the Scoot Cargo. I'm riding the the regular one, but the Scoot Cargo, you can see there, it's actually quite a nice bike. It's got a larger space in the back for all of your luggage. And it's also got a space where you can hang the bike, you can hang the helmet off. So you get two helmets with every bike. So there's a small one and a large one. So you choose the one that obviously fits you best. And then you can hang the other one off the side of the car gear. You can't do that with the one I'm on. You have to keep it in the back. Now, of course, because I'm not using the supplied helmets, I can't put anything, I can't put anything in there because I don't have any space. But it's still a very impressive ride. Very impressive. Like those lights are turning and I was like, oh, hang on, what's going on? This is new. All the lights are running at the same time. They're all counting now, that's so weird. Lifesavers. And off we go. Uh, we'll watch that guy. Make sure that he doesn't come into my lane. I don't really wanna, I don't wanna give this back. I mean, I'm going to. So I'm gonna be heading back to the airport in a few. So would I recommend Scoot? Well, if you like scooters, and you like riding scooters, then yeah, Scoot is gonna be great for you because it's a really, it's a really easy, quick way of getting around San Francisco. I mean, it really is awesome. If, if you don't like scooters, then you really shouldn't be using Scoot because you have to feel comfortable on a bike. And I think that's the biggest criticism I have of, of, of a scooter network in San Francisco. In order to make use of it, in order to feel comfortable with it, you need to have kind of control of your bike. With all the roads and all of the potholes, you really do need to have some kind of bike savviness. But anyway, that is it. That is the Scoot. That is the Scoot service. That is the Scoot. It's coming to other cities around the world, I can't see, really say much more at the moment, but they, they do have plans to expand. Right now it's only in San Francisco. But keep your ear to the ground because there might be some more good things happening later this year. Until then, I'm Nikki gordon Blainfield. I've had fun scooting around San Francisco. I'm going to go and be boring now, get back on a, a plane and head back to Portland. So, as always, Stay smart and keep evolving.